Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're super excited to talk about The Magician's Elephant, debuting on Netflix on March 17th. Today, we have the wonderful director of the film, Wendy Rogers, and producer, Julia Pastore, here for us. Um, and we have a great group of influencers who are all excited about this movie, and they have questions for you. So without further ado, I'm going to throw it over to them, and we're going to get our questions started. Um, our first question is going to come from Ashley Saunders. Ashley from Ashley & Co. Go for it. Hi, ladies. Thank you for taking time to speak with us today. Love your background. So, Wendy, oh, thank you. I, oh, my gosh, this movie was gorgeous. Wendy, congratulations on this being your directorial debut. Thanks. Truly awesome work. I mean, you really got me. My heartstrings were pulled. I was like, this is rude. She's making me cry. Um, did your expertise in visual effects inform how you approach directing this visually stunning film? Because honestly, I felt like it definitely captured the magic of the book. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, it's hard for me to say whether my background, how much my background influenced it, because I'm just me. I'm my background. I'm all of my influences over the years. And when I read the book, I mean, it captured my heartstrings and made me cry. And I could see it at that point. Um, we had an amazing team that worked from some inspirations that I had. Max Bo as our production designer, Yuri Lioy. Uh, our director, um, all of our team at Animal Logic, and really, you know, took those inspirations and elevated into, you know, a, a, I think very unique um, world building, um, very physically grounded, but that lets the moments of magical realism and magic play against in juxtaposition. Um, so I guess it did, but I think it's really just because that's who I am, not in any particular way that I curated the visual effects. Thank you. Great. Our next question is going to come from Janice Seitzer from Whiskey and Sunshine. Hi, ladies. So this is a question for both of you. Um, so adapting books for screen can be a little challenging. Um, were there aspects of the book that you wanted to include that might have been harder to translate to screen than others? Um, or is there anything that you weren't able to include that you wanted to because of that? I think that there there are I mean it, it's a it's an ensemble so there's a lot of great characters, um, and we couldn't get all the characters into the story into into the length of a movie. Uh, we couldn't make it three movies, <laughs> um, so we had to sort of cut some things down that made us sad. I don't know if you know the book, but Tomas and Bartok win. Um, but I think that we were able to keep the pivotal scenes and the and the main themes of it. Yeah. It is hard. The feeling of the book and the, yeah. the truth of the main characters. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. That question. Did that answer your question? Or yeah, no, I I, I you know, it's really just what whether things, you know, that you wanted to include that you couldn't and just the challenges that you saw. And that was a perfect answer. So yeah, thank good. you. All right, excellent. Great. Our next question is going to come from Celeste from Pretty Geekery and a prose is a prose. Hello, very nice to meet you. Hi. So um, I love the movie as, as much as I love the book. Um, and I wanted to say to you that I love and I cry with the scene where the elephant washes the makeup off. I, it was the first time I cried. So even though that scene is not in the book, I felt like it captured the scene, uh, the spirit and the meaning of the book really well. So I wanted to ask you both, uh, which one is your favorite scene that wasn't in the book, but that you loved in the movie? I'm gonna start because yours is gonna make her cry also maybe. Uh, <laughs> I, I love the... I love the dream that P uh, Peter has where he goes and plays in the snow with the elephant and is up in the sky and then goes in the water and then meets her family. I mean, that just gets me every time. And it's so incredibly beautiful. It, um, it This really came from Wendy. You, you know, you, you had a very specific vision for, for uh, Peter kind of being free with the elephant. And I, I just think it's incredibly magical. Um, you know, I, I have so many favorites. It's like, <laughs> it must be to pick a favorite. Um, but that's not in the book. I actually really love um, the scene where Peter is flying. I really feel like there's something that's so 
wondrous about that, um, both for him and for the town to experience. And it really marks for me in the film, this moment where I see the town seeing Peter, you know, take action against these impossible odds and succeed and that it is possible, you know, and I really, I feel that in that moment when he's flying. I love them. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I love the whole making the impossible possible. Um, as a parent, I, I, I've almost adapted that to my own family. And I find that I'm like, I think about this movie all the time. And when my kids are getting frustrated at school or they say it's impossible, I find myself going, no, impossible is possible. Like it's totally made me have a different frame of mind. So I thank you both for that. And obviously Kate for writing that. <laughs> um, our next question is going to come from Rosemary and Rosemary's from Library Mom Books. Hi, it's so nice to meet Hi. you all. Um, this is hard for me to say as a librarian that I love the book, but I actually liked the movie better. Oh, wow. And I never say that. <laughs> um, I really thought you did such an excellent job of taking the central themes of the book and delivering them in such a beautifully visual and magically whimsical way. Um, there are some heavy themes in the book, and I was really impressed with how you were able to balance that with a little bit of humor throughout. So I was just wondering how you decided to do that. And because there's a lot of changes from the book. So in adapting it, how did you decide like to include those three impossible tasks? How did that come about? Well, I think uh, the, um, the, the adaptation was written a long time ago, and we have to give credit, a, a lot of the credit to Martin Hines, who, who wrote the screenplay. And when he read the book, he said, he said, you know, this book is an incredibly beautiful confectionery. He described it as a confectionery. He's like, but movies need to have a little more substance to them. And so he came up with the idea of the three impossible tasks, which I think is a great way to balance some of the darker themes and some of the kind of the heart, right, and and of the film by allowing Peter to be active and tenacious and have grit and also allow for the comedy with the king. So the king came in and added some sort of balanced some of those he heavier themes by by providing, you know, comic relief. So uh, that was important to us to have a second act. And I think the other thing for me with the the, the sort of impossible tasks is that, you know, one of the the very important things about this idea that the impossible is possible is it's about taking action, even the smallest action, you know, questioning, asking what if. And so having giving Peter tasks that he needed to accomplish really gave him that sort of ability to be yeah. active and for us to follow him through that action. Yeah, and root for him. Yeah. And the town to root for yeah. him. I love that. And that's such a great message, you know, for the, for the viewers that, you know, you can, you can question, which is excellent, but then also taking action. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rosie. Our next question is from Diane Sullivan from three decades, three kids. Hello. I've had three kids for three decades. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm so happy to meet you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I was not expecting the emotional movie I just went through. I watched it just before this. I ended it about an hour ago. And oh my goodness, I had like tissues and tissues. And oh, um, it was just, it was wonderful. My daughter watched it one last night and she told me, she's like, you better have a box of tissues. And I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'll be off. I'll be okay. I'm fine. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm good at this. And so the one thing that I thought was just absolutely magical throughout the entire film was the message of hope, especially like there were like, there's a lot of kids that have no hope. And especially like people have lost so much, so much and like so many family members throughout the pandemic and everything. And I thought that this really showed a lot of hope. And I want to know, like, how, like, you really got everyone emotional. Like, how do you, how did you do that? It was just incredible. Like, what were some of the things that you, you knew you had to include to do that? Wow. How'd you make us cry? 
Oh, I know. I'm like, uh, well, I mean, Kate's story is incredibly beautiful. A story of families coming together will make yeah. you cry. And the, the thing is that there, you know, there are moments in the book that are directly translated into the film that captured my heart. And I know they did Julia's as well and gave me that lump of tears in the throat. Mm -hmm. And those those moments speak so much to the themes in the film and we needed to to capture them so you know peter's empathy for the elephant when he recognizes that he needs to get her home was yeah. such a strong uh, moment from the book um when gloria's heart opens to to peter when they're having dinner and she sees you know with his simple sort of response to this you know simple stew that she's made she sees all of the comfort that he's lacked in his life and despite mm -hmm. her having closed her heart you know previously it opens and and you know it broke my heart open when I read that moment so mm -hmm. we, we knew that there was such strong emotional heartfelt moments and we kept you know kept them as north stars in the film even while we were taking Peter um, through his sort of strongly held belief and journey with with all of the grit and determination that he has to make that impossible possible. I, I, and to add to that, which I think is right, and, and a lot of crafting and all the scenes yeah. and crafting on the characters was just making, uh, really delivering on the idea that Peter, and really landing that Peter really, you want him to get his family back. You mm -hmm. want him to find his sister. But you, through him, see, have empathy for this elephant. And so when mm -hmm. he makes the selfless choice to, to say, I'm not going to get my sister, I'm going to help you get back. I mean, I think the yeah. whole audience supports yeah. him like, yes, but then you're sort of sad because you're like, yeah, but then you're not going to get your family. So that when he does get his family, it's like real tearjerker because it's like he he made the right choice, even if it wasn't to service him, uh -huh. to service somebody else. And you get your, you, you know, magical things happen when you show compassion for everything. And I feel like there's just so many conversation starters within the movie itself that it's, 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 it was beautiful. You really did a great job. Congratulations. Thank, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Our next question is going to come from Amy Fulcher from As the Bunny Hops. Hello. Kate Hi. is such a wonderful author. She's written so many amazing children's books. I would love to know if she had her hands in the production at any point and if she had any involvement since I know she didn't write the screenplay. Uh, no, she didn't actually. She's she's the uh, she's she's had many books adapted into film, and she believes that she you know she tells her story through the book, and she's very excited for other storytellers and filmmakers to sort of interpret make their interpretations of it. So she was involved in that. She knew we were making it. She uh, we showed her material during COVID. Um, so she you know we had touch points because it mattered a lot to us. Mm -hmm that we keep the spirit and tone and voice of her book it was very very important to us um and we just wanted to have those touch points she didn't ask for them we were like please yes yeah. we just want to show her <laughs> um and the really great news is that she loves it um she feels she loves it she loves the new she loves the king she loves the new things that we've added and that's always incredibly rewarding thank you so much well, you guys all, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. I think we all agree this movie is absolutely beautiful. Um, please make sure to tell everyone to tune in and check it out when it opens on Netflix on March 17th. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, everybody thank you. else. Enjoy thank your you weekend. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.